So when you came to IMG in 2006 from NASCAR, did you already think that marketing of college sports was an untapped gold mine? Yes. Well, w working for Ted Forsman, you know, one of the things Ted stresses is growth and identifying growth segments. So what he told me to do is go out and study various growth segments. One of them was college sports. And when you looked at the size and size of college sports, 172 million fans and 80 million female fans, which you know females make the buying decisions, 29 uh, million Americans that earn over 100,000 and re very relevant to 18 to 24 year olds, the largest of 18 to 24 year old fan base in sports. And then ethnically diverse, that was an incredible demographic. And you know, the first thing I did, I called a, a, someone who has now joined us at IMG College, Roger Vanderstick, who was my head marketing guy at NASCAR. I said, Roger, how come I never heard of these guys? And he said, well, we never wanted to compare ourselves to colleges. We always compared ourselves to sports. So this had, we had an incredible, demographic in college and then as we looked into it because the rights were owned by these uh, several companies uh, the sponsorship rights were they weren't, weren't able to aggregate enough scale to bring a good product offering to market and so really the sponsor penetration in college sports has really been five or six companies you know and at NASCAR we had 32 so you had this enormous base of, of uh, fans this incredible demographic and really very low uh, sponsor penetration. And so for us, we saw a real opportunity uh, to, to enhance, the, enhance the business. Did you see any parallels between the college sports market and NASCAR when you first came to NASCAR in 2003 in terms of leveraging sponsorships and branding and licensing and those types of things? A absolutely. You know, NASCAR was one of those uh, properties at the time that wasn't really in the, given a lot of consideration of thought. And for an odd reason, you know, college sports really has not given the proper consideration of thought in terms of people look, evaluating it as a potential property. So we're having to go out and now tell the story uh, about college sports much in the same way that we had to tell the story at NASCAR. The difference between NASCAR and uh, college sports is, of course, NASCAR has 75 million fans and college sports has 172 million fans and the demographic in college sports is, is quite different. So it's actually very analogous, although the story here is very, very exciting. The biggest deal to date is the UPS deal. Why is that such a game changer? Well, it's a game changer because uh, we created a new platform. And we're offering advertisers and, and sponsors the opportunity to reach out to consumers in 49 of the top 50 markets in America. The market we don't have is Puerto Rico. So with one buy, I can buy 49 of the top 50 markets in America. Now you contrast that to the, the other pro leagues. If I want to buy 49, I can't buy 49 uh, markets in any of the pro leagues because they're only in 30 markets. And if I want to buy local rights, I have to go to 30 different teams to buy those rights. Here I can offer you all the teams in 49 markets with one buy. And that's a, a, quite a platform. The other, other note is the, the value that, w w that you get versus the cost is unmatched in all of sports. So um, it's an attractive package. The old Navy deal is also a groundbreaker, so to speak. Uh, how is that unique for the colleges involved? Well, it's really the first retailer that's really stepped up in a big way and activated nationally. And, you know, con consumer products in college are somewhere between 3.5 and $4 billion at retail, really second only to Major League Baseball. The one difference in, in college versus Major League Baseball, of course, is in baseball they have replica jerseys, which puts the name on the back of the jersey. In college, they don't. So when you really look at the consumer uh, products appeal of college sports, it's, it's, it's formidable. But Old Navy is also uh, going to some lengths to customize its stores to work in this deal. Is this part of uh, how these deals are activated, if you will? Yeah, sure. I mean, they're, they're going to do uh, television and radio advertising, going to put concepts in stores to try and tap into the, uh, the excitement around college sports. And it worked actually analogous to what Victoria's Secret has done in college sports, where they've had a very successful pink line around uh, college sports as, as well. And how about the number of categories of sponsors in college sports right now? Is it somewhat uh, small relative to what it could potentially be? Very, very narrow. I mean, it's, you really have banking, insurance, wireless, um, 
soft drink and, and maybe one or two others that I've uh, that I've forgotten. So it's a very narrow base of sponsors, and so there are no consumer packaged goods. There are no uh, consumer electronics, and there's just so much room. Pharmaceuticals. There's so many home improvement. There's so many rooms that can grow. Uh, so many ways to grow the in the number of categories when you look in comparison to the other other sports with similar or smaller size and demographics. What was the strategy you employed to unify the highly fragmented college sports marketing business after you arrived there? Well, first of all, we had to get into the into the business. So we went out and acquired a company called CLC, which represented about 151 Division I schools in licensing. And they, they've done a tr it's a terrific acquisition. But we really, that was a foot in the door. And then we identified the commercial rights business, which really is intellectual property, experiential, signs and radios as a business we thought we could grow. So we went out and acquired a company called Host Communications, which had you know, Texas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and roughly 13 schools. And then we added a, another you know, 10 or 15 schools and then acquired another company called ISP in Winston-Salem that had 55 schools. So now we have uh, the commercial rights to colleges in 49 of the 50 markets and 70, 74 schools. And, um, so it's been a hard, it's been not been easy, you know, going through really through four integrations in, in, in a relatively short amount of time, you know, has been, been challenging but also very exciting. How important is it to be able to leverage and tie together the various platforms that IMG College has, whether you're talking about hospitality or brand licensing or events on campus? It's, it's critical to our future. I mean, the companies we have, because they were fragmented, primarily focus on radio and signage sales, which are more of a commodity and more transactional. And where, where we see the growth is with integrated packages, integrated packages being intellectual property, the right to use Alabama's logo in advertising and promotion, experiential, meaning being the 12th member of a team or you know, having access uh, pre or post game to, to the field, as well as tickets and hospitality, along with radio, along with signage, and along with the TV assets we have. So it's putting all that together and offering that to a sponsor in a local market for an individual school, in a region, and now also nationally with 49 or 50, in 49 or 50 markets. That's what's new. So you have new products. You have something that's unique because really there are only five or six categories. And as a marketer, I'm looking for a competitive advantage, a point of difference. Uh, so when I go to look at a place to invest my money, do I want to be in a place that's crowded or do I want to be in a place where I can stick out uh, further than anybody else, certainly in comparison to my competitors? And then in a challenging economy, something that has real value. As I said, I'm very comfortable in the value proposition of what you get and what it costs and what you can do with it as compared to other opportunities in the sports marketplace. So is one of the reasons why uh, you have a competitive advantage is because you can offer multiple platforms? We can offer multiple f platforms. You're right, lo long-term, local, regional, and national. And of course, you know, another great national platform is the NCAA. Final Four is a national platform. We have a national platform with the 49 and 50 markets of the local schools. That's both national in terms of, uh, it gives me a national program, but it's something I can activate you know, locally that's very rich, grassroots, gets into the community and, and engages consumers.